All right, so thanks for tuning in. So last night we had UFC on ESPN 12. It was a pretty solid for a fight night card. It was, it was pretty top heavy, I would say, mm -hmm. but even on the undercard, they, they performed well. So you want to do some quick hits for the results? Just run them, run them down. All right, so we started off with uh, Yusuf Zalal. I'm sorry, I'm sure I butchered that name. Defeating Jordan Griffin via unanimous decision. We had Kay Henson beating Jin Yun Frey by third round submission. And now the, uh, the cool part about this one, one, she's 20 years old. So she's the second youngest fighter on the roster right now. Mm -hmm. But also, she, somebody bet $37,000 on her to win, and that would net 20. So they won 20 off of it. Now, her, her purse for this was 12 and 12. So she, won, she made 12 for the win and 12 to show now she had the 50k fight bonus but her contracted for 12 and 12 the guy almost made more money betting on her than she made and she met the guy after the fight in vegas <laughs> that's awesome. so th there's a picture together so that that, that that was kind of funny and she was like what's the gambling age in the states is it the same as the drinking age uh probably 21 definitely probably so 21. she wouldn't even be old enough to bet yet either, yeah which is just, <laughs> which is just wild yeah, it's nuts. It's a wild world, that, that gambling. Vegas, man. That's yeah. a Vegas story. Yeah. And then we had Tanner Boser, Canadian kid, defeating Philip Leans via first-round knockout. So all this Philip Leans guy, he's had back-to-back loss in the UFC, and he was won the PFL Heavyweight Championship in 2018, becoming a millionaire, which is why I don't know why any solid fighter in the UFC that's just like at the bottom of the rankings doesn't go to PFL and just win a million dollars because they're far better than all the talent there. Yeah, that's like, a great point. That, like, that's low hanging yeah. fruit out there. Yeah, like <laughs> they, they would they completely outclass him and get that million bucks at the end. We had Kama Worthy defeating Louis Pena, better known as Violent Bob Ross, be a third round submission. Kama Worthy coming in here as a big dog, winning that. Louis Pena was a big favorite for this one, and as a fan favorite too, might have pushed the line up a little bit. So that was a little bit of a shock. Next fight, we had Julian Arosa taking the fight on less than a week's notice, beating Sean Woodson. As the biggest dog of the night, as Sean Woodson, I think, was over minus 500 mm -hmm. at, at betting line close. So that was – and Arosa, I think, took the fight Thursday. Just wild. Back-to-back -back mm -hmm. fights. The underdog went in big there. Then we had Takashi Sato defeating Jason Witt first round TKO in the first 45 seconds. That was quick, man. That, that was such a quick fight. And again, with this one, too, Jason Witt took the fight on Thursday as well. Mm -hmm. very, probably barely enough time to cut the weight and everything. So you can't – I mean, I hope he gets another shot. So, I mean, mm -hmm. see what he can do with a full training camp or even half of a training camp. And we had Brendan Allen defeating Kyle Dawkins. It wasn't really controversial him winning, but the scorecards as one judge had a 30-27, and it was pretty clear that Dawkins won the third round. So there's a little bit of controversy over that, but yeah, you could see it on Dawkins's face the minute that that thirty twenty seven got called. He he knew that was bunk. Yeah, and, and I mean, to, at least the right fighter won the fight. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's just like there was no damage, no harm, no foul. But at the same time, it just shows there's a problem in the UFC. Like oh, it's, it's a the cat's problem. out of the bag. It's a huge problem. I mean, and maybe that's just I, I, example I, that. Do you, do you want to get into some of this judging problem now, or do you want to get into it later in the episode? Let's, we can get it later in the episode. Okay. So next we had Marie Screen defeating Jan Vellante via third round submission, which was, they call it an arm triangle choke. I saw it as a massive man just bear hugging another even massiver, that's not a word, but even bigger, <laughs> big, bigger man just who was exhausted until he just couldn't breathe. Like yeah. it, it was the, the the ugliest submission I think I've ever seen in the UFC. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere too, and all of a sudden this guy they were hugging it out, and this guy just all of a sudden started tapping. Um, mm -hmm. The I mean no, nobody knew what was going on. Uh, commentators were were completely lost. Bisping was the one who first said, "Okay, that was exhaust. This guy's just straight exhausted." And yeah. you, you put a little bit of pressure on it on his breathing, and he just he, he just can't can't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just wild. That's that's mission. and Jan Volante is coming off of a 500 day layoff. He's mm -hmm. fought at light heavyweight before this, and now he's at heavyweight. And it looks like the only reason why he's at heavyweight because he just let his gut go. Because <laughs> he he borderline he, like he had abs at light heavyweight, and now he's just got a gut at heavyweight. Yeah. So and, I mean, do you guy? I mean, quarantine set us all hard. Yeah, and my buddy. Uh, bet on, bet put a hundred on Green to win by submission, and Green has never won by submission before. I don't know why this guy put it, put a hundred dollars on it, but he won nine hundred. 
So that's, that's ridiculous. Wild that, that, that is as wild. The, that, it was that, just a wild in our friend group. It was a wild night of betting. Yeah, yeah, nuts. people. Yeah, yeah, people were putting weird bets, and they were somehow winning some of them. And it was just like, why didn't you just buy a lottery? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you locked <laughs> obviously with you tonight. Yeah, these, these crazy people betting out here. And now we get kind of into the good part of the card here. We had Mike Perry defeating Mickey Gall via unanimous decision. And what a show that was with Mike Perry sticking to the gimmick and having his girlfriend be the only person in the corner who, in my understanding, has no knowledge about MMA. Mm -hmm. Like, all she pretty much said was, you're doing great. And he just told her where to put the ice pack. You know, and there's so much behind this story, too. There's so much analysis you can do on why this guy. Okay, I think it's more, yeah, like you say your opinion, because I I think it's a good call. I think it's, so here's the story, right? This guy, Mike Perry, he's in the UFC. His wife uh, recently divorced, but when he was married, his wife was in his corner, right? So they're like, she was a big part of his team until they got divorced. They split up. He gets a new girlfriend now. And the girlfriend say either he, in his head, he's trying to flex on the ex-wife or in his, like in his house, like his, his girlfriend's just ragging on like, Oh, you, she was a part of your team. Why am I not a part of your team? And he says, my pair goes to her and says, babe, I'm going to do you one better. You're going to be the only member of my team. And he goes out and he, and he wins this fight. And in doing so, he gets to flex on his ex-wife that was used to be a part of his team. Now she's no longer part of the team. He's just replaced her and the entire team with his new girlfriend. And he went out and put out a, a, a spectacular showing. Now, yeah, I thought... He looked really good in the fight. And two, this could have been a, like a career-saving fight for him in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Because I think coming up to this, he dropped five of seven. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as exciting as to watch, you got to win to stay around in the UFC. Mm-hmm. So, if he loses this, like, he might have been going for the chopping block. Yeah. So, this was a crazy night for Mike Perry. And, and, I mean, he, like his girlfriend, I was expecting him to just drop down one knee and propose to her. Because how big of a flex would that be on the ex-wife? Uh, he didn't hilarious. do that. He didn't do that, unfortunately. But then he goes on a rant about taxes starts flexing on the government telling them to stop taking his money and it was it was great when he he said no i'm not any of these guys complaining about the ufc not paying me enough i don't mm-hmm. care about what the ufc is paying me fine it's the mm-hmm. government that's taking so i think taxes they're going to be pretty much done like i think this guy laid out the the biggest case to just abolish taxes i think i think the government yeah, I'm, I'm afraid their that now. monday morning i'm going into the accounting firm mike perry's gonna be squaring up waiting for me <laughs> <laughs> You ain't filing my taxes, man. That was uh, just a, a wild night, and and you gotta you gotta put yourself you gotta make headlines for yourself, right? And that and that's what Mike Perry did uh, before the fight, during yeah. the fight, and after the fight. The guy was just staying relevant in the news, and it's it's a lot of fun. And the interesting thing is, I mean, in the environment of the UFC Apex where there's no fans. It's very quiet. You can hear the commentators. You can hear the coaches. And, of yeah. course, all the coaches are using codified language. But at the same time, Perry said, you know, he was kind of joking on, on Gall and saying, well, their coaches, they had all these fancy code words. By the third round, I had it figured out. I knew what mm-hmm. he was doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, whether that's all talk or there's some substance to that, it's, it's an interesting thing. Now we look at more fights with, with no fans in, in attendance where you can hear everything. And yep. maybe that's like the strategy behind Mike Perry's decision was to say, you know what? I don't want a guy figuring out our codes. I'm not going to have codes other than you're doing great, sweetie. Um, and it seemed to work. Yeah, it, it's well. I, I think Mike Perry's one of the only fighters on the roster that could pull that off and, and do it. But I mean, if you're Mickey Gall right now, how embarrassing is that? Mm-hmm. Where it, it should have been. Uh, I'm not gonna say it should have been a layup fight because it's a tough matchup for him, especially mm-hmm. when it stayed on the feet. But to get outclassed on the ground as well yeah. by somebody that is not well known to be any good on the ground, like in his fight against Cowboy Cerrone, just gave up his arm to mm-hmm. get broken, and just to I didn't have not he doesn't have a corner to yell suggestions and mm-hmm. you just get completely outclassed. Yeah, and it was 29, 28. He usually could have been 30, 27. That's a wild point, too, because, I mean, Gall is so good on the ground. Like, that's his bread and butter. And he knew if, if this fight stayed on its feet, uh, he would be losing. But if it went to the ground, he had a, 
he had a very good chance and he was on his back the whole time. He was yeah. just, he was laid out. Um, real shame for Gall. This gotta, you gotta feel this one, like, especially with Mike Perry, he's such a like natural showman in terms of all this stuff. Like he, he gloats very yeah. well. Uh, and just to see him, him with his girlfriend, you just got, that's an awful feeling. Yeah. And I mean, too, good on Vegas for this one, because the Vegas odds were Perry was close to minus 300 for this fight and Gall was plus 225 at closing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, like I was looking at that going, how, like, how is Gall this big of a, a dog mm-hmm. here? Like it, Mike Perry doesn't even have coaches and everything. And I'm sure a lot of people jumped on Gall, but mm-hmm. Vegas held strong and, you know, Vegas never loses. So. Yeah. They, now here's, they, here's a question leaving that fight. Right. And I've posed this to you before, but I want to hear your answer on, on air. Um, w- now that Mike Perry has won, only having a girlfriend who, who, as far as we know, knows very little about UFC or MMA in his corner. Do mm-hmm. more fighters maybe not do the exact same thing or come out with more unorthodox teams? No, there's, no. there's no way because a normal person, which Mike Perry is not a normal person, would like advice in the middle of a fight that is going to cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, what, <laughs> about, what about Tony Ferguson, though? Yeah, I mean, even he, Tony he Ferguson, he, he but, but he, is he not very close with some of his coaches, like Eddie yeah. Bravo and that? Yeah, like, see, true. even even him, he <laughs> needs and wants that advice. Mm-hmm. When you thinking, have your your career tens of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. on the line, you want a little bit more than you're doing great, sweetie. Because what wouldn't it be a wouldn't it be such a Tony Ferguson move for him to come out and say Amazon Alexa is going to be my only cornerman now? Yeah. Did you see, speaking of Tony Ferguson too, did you see what he did where this, uh, there was a a kid, uh, part of the Make-A-Wish program that wanted to meet Mm -hmm. Tony Ferguson, but obviously they can't because coronavirus. So he FaceTimed him for over an hour, but he put the kid through a workout (laughs) for an hour. And I'm like, Tony Ferguson's the type of guy to make a -A Make-A-Wish kid go through a full blown workout. The kid probably loved it though. Oh yeah, it was yeah, awesome. I, like awesome man, for the kid. That but was, that's like that's the type of, that that's pretty cool by Tony. That is cool. That that's a that's class act. That's yeah. He, yeah, very cool. Un, underneath all the the wacko stuff going on in his mind, he's a he's a genuine good guy. Yeah, just been taking an hour out of his day to do that. Mm-hmm. Especially, that's I'm sure awesome. he's been been having some tough times after the Gaethje loss. Yeah, too. after that Gaethje loss, and I mean it. It's a real shame that Gaethje lost. Like think because we're probably never gonna get Tony Khabib. No, 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 it's just not going to happen because I mean, Khabib. I mean, he he has probably two fights left. Uh, if I was him, I'd want to retire at at thirty wins. Well, is he and is he twenty eight and zero right now? I think he is. I'm pretty sure he's either twenty eight and zero or twenty nine and zero. Yeah, I but think. Every- but I think the game plan is I think he fights Gaethje, and then if he wins that, he fights McGregor. Like I mm-hmm. think that has to be a and and just ride off into the sunset. So Tony, yeah. not a part of it, maybe. I mean, that, maybe that's a fight that gets made 10 years from now, like the, uh, the Tito-Liddell uh, fight. Mm-hmm. And it's just the one that got away. We're going to finally do it. And these two old men just duking it out. Oh, we would watch. Oh, I'd watch, watch it. it. I, I would immediately regret it probably afterwards. You <laughs> just see them they, yeah. not being able to do anything. But. Yeah. Man, it was – I mean, those fights when the guys come back, it's, it's usually pretty rough. It's, it's tough to watch. That's why I hope Mike Tyson doesn't get back in the ring. No. Well, I mean, be nice to. It'd be fun to see him. It depends. I'd on tune who, in and watch. It, yeah, but it, at the end of the day, you like you'd say that wasn't worth it. Yeah. It, yeah. Like, please don't like hurt your brain cells even more than that. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we had the main event, which was mm-hmm. probably fight of the year so far. No, actually. That might be a little recency bias because uh, Joanna, yeah, Joanna Whaley, was better. She, Joanna Whaley but, was, was better. But it makes a short list for fighting. It makes a one short the, list. But, one of the best the fights people, I've ever seen in my life, too. But I, I don't understand why people are saying fight of the year, like, without mentioning the Joanna. Because, I mean, that was – that blew it out of the water. My Like, the Poirier hooker was good, but – Yeah, I think Poirier hooker's probably two right now. Yeah, it's definitely number two for the year. Um, and it it's was interesting. A, it was a hell of a show. Too. Because people were saying leading into this that this is a fight of the year candidate. So, I mean, that paid off. It, it lived up to the hype, which, I mean, usually when, when these hypes are, or fights are hugely hyped up, they never live up to our expectations. This one probably exceeded my expectations. Oh, 100%. Um, 
And, I mean, it was – the judges made the right decision here. It was 100%. Mm-hmm. Dustin Poirier's win. Like I said last week on the podcast, I think Poirier is the second best lightweight in the division. Mm-hmm. And I think that with – like, if he keeps going up, I think he could have a shot against Khabib. Now, okay, that's, that's a good thing. I'm going to put a pin in that. But then how good, based on saying Poirier is number two, Hooker just went five hard-fought rounds with this guy – how good is Dan Hooker? Oh, his stock went up even with the yeah. loss. One hundred percent, his stock went up. His stock, like, I, I, he, he's top five in the division mm-hmm. for sure. Like, in, you got Khabib as the champ. Then I think you get Poirier, or Gaethje, Ferguson, McGregor, Hooker. Yeah. Like, so who now, else is there? So now Hooker fights Tony. You think? No, I think I'd like to see Poirier and, and Tony because Poirier's mm-hmm. not getting a title shot anytime soon. He's coming like he just lost. That's true. And then Khabib and Gaethje is not going to happen until September. And so then, then likely we- after that, McGregor's going to slime and get his way in there. So I think I like Poirier and Tony. And even though Tony's coming off a loss, like he won 12 straight before that. So mm-hmm. it's, it's not like it, Tony deserves to stick around there. Yeah. That's a fun fight, too. Yeah, that is a fun fight. And now let's let's look at Dan Hooker. Okay, let's say Conor McGregor, right? Forget about who Conor McGregor is. Just look at him as a fight. Like, let's say the UFC was treating him just like any other fighter, right? Which is not true. Yeah. Do they, would they give him Hooker? No. Next? No. It'd be, no, because it wouldn't make sense because they're similar rankings, but McGregor's coming off a win. Mind you, much lesser competition, Cerrone. No offense to Cerrone. One, yeah. Probably my favorite fighter other than GSP. Mm-hmm. But lesser competition and Hooker's con- on a loss. Like, that, it wouldn't make sense to match up. Mm-hmm. I... I don't know who you match Hooker up with right now. Like who? I, I'd have to look at the rankings to mm-hmm. see. I mean, that's a tough one. Like off the bat, Paul Felder comes to mind, but I mean, Paul Felder they just they just fought, mm-hmm. and Paul Felder retired. <laughs> oh, um, I forgot that he, he retired. retired. Yeah, and he yeah. said, "Well, he, he kind of did the obligatory, you know, I'm gonna, I like, I got this commentating thing, which is making me money, and I can mm-hmm. still stay around, but not get my ass kicked." I'm yep. retiring, but I'll come back if something interests me. Basically, I yeah. want the bag and the, the like the headline, you know. Yeah. Um, it's one of those ones where I'll come back for like close to a title shot or McGregor or something. Yeah, basically is is his situation. I'm so, pulling up the lightweight rankings yeah. here too, just to take a look. So I mean we got yeah, like we're pretty much who we listed. Like Hooker's at number five right now, and then Felder's mm-hmm. Felder's at six. Charles Oliveira doesn't make any sense. Kevin mm-hmm. Lee's taking a step back for a while. Yeah. Iaquenta, I mean, I'm pretty sure Hooker's already beat Iaquenta. And then mm-hmm. you get to like Diego Ferreira, where it's like that makes like that makes no sense for Hooker. I think it's too much of a step down. Like he, this yeah. guy is on a rise. Um, I think I think if you're Hooker, I mean, one, you need some time off. Yeah. Is it? Here's an You t- give Hooker some time off, like mm-hmm. a lengthy time off. What if he gets the loser of Khabib Gaethje in September? Gets the loser, and then what would? Yeah, no, that I think that works. I think that because works. the loser of that fight is going to need like a theoretically like a bounce back fight, but you mm-hmm. don't want to drop him too down the ranking. So it get, it's a perfect opportunity where, like, whatever one win, loses the title fight, they come back beat Hooker. They're still relevant, or Hooker mm-hmm. beats them and gets over. Yeah, no, that's I think that's a great chance. And if you're Hooker, you can't pass up an opportunity like that. And if you're either uh, Gaethje or Khabib, you can't pass up that opportunity either because yeah. he's a guy a bit lower that you can bounce back off of. So it's I think it, that's Hooker just has thing. to be okay to sit in the shelf for six, he's got, seven months. Now, if you're Dana White, you go up to him and say, hey, look, we got to put you on the shelf. Like, you understand what's going on at Lightweight. We can, we can send you down. And you can fight somebody lower than you and defend yeah. your place, or we can give you, we can shoot you up to to the top if you just wait six months. I think any fighter, even the busiest, the fighter who wants to be as busy as possible, is going to be like, you know what, Dana, that's pretty reasonable given everything going on in the lightweight division. And especially the the war that he just went through, he's going to need some time to recover. Yeah, it's it was an ob- absolute battle for five rounds. These guys were trading huge blows. Um, mm. It was it was a great fight. And I think for Poirier, too, it's like I think matching him up with Ferguson that makes a lot of sense. It keeps him relevant at the top, mm-hmm. and it's not chasing. Like, obviously, like you can't, like, I'd love to see him fight McGregor. It's not going to happen. It's mm-hmm. not going to happen. So there's no point yeah. even talking about it. 
And then anybody like Gaethje and Khabib, like there's no point in matching Poirier up with Gaethje for the interim title. Mm-hmm. Like to, for him to get it again, like Gaethje and Khabib's got to be in the next fight. So I think those are the only logical fights in the yeah. logjam there. And, and I mean, the thing with the, the exciting thing about Dan Hooker is it just adds another name into the hat of the crowded lightweight division. Mm-hmm. The sad thing about Hooker is it's a crowded lightweight division. Yeah, um, it, it's ridiculous. You know, it's, but, it's nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm super excited for him though. I think, um, yeah. really the rise that he's on very similar. Like we see, we see, uh, Gilbert Burns, you know, client just climbing up out of nowhere, um, amidst the UFC that with people at the top, just saying, I want more money. I'm not going to fight this guy. Oh, I'm going to retire, like tire, whatever. Gilbert yeah. Burns is just willing to fight. And he, he took an opportunity and he ran with it. beat beat Woodley. And now mm-hmm. he's headlining against Usman. Uh, yep. in a couple weeks it's just and, absolutely and, insane and we'll we'll get into that i think we should do a full preview next yeah, weekend for sure for ufc 251 yeah but i mean the ufc's gotta get their judgment fixed like we mm. mentioned earlier my idea what i think is i think the round scoring needs to be looked at i'm not gonna sit here and tell you how to fix that because i don't know what you can do and they're yeah. kind of being more give put more 10 8 rounds mm-hmm. i think the big, biggest thing is i think live scoring i think fighters need to know in between rounds what the score is and i think no. just more judges i think there's more three judges, judges yes now. but no live scoring i think there needs to be a minimum of five no. judges mm-hmm. i think i like i think and it sounds stupid but i think 10 would be great and i understand that's hard to do but you put up 10 judges or, like if three of them are fucked mm-hmm. seven will outweigh it do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i mean like the only thing is, I don't know how much a judge makes. So is that feasible? I can't see a judge making that much money. I don't know. I don't know. And all I know is that Vegas, the mafia, they run the UFC. The judges, you know, like not to get too conspiracy theory, but you're getting into you're getting into some people's business if you start adding judges. No, and, I, but I don't, I don't <laughs> think there's any reason why you can't have at least five. Mm-hmm. five makes uh, five makes a lot of sense and and then yeah. just it spreads the risk out why not bad four? Apples how not... about four what about why do you just skip over four no because then i'm just can... kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> but anyway well no because then if they're like they, your split decision you could go two two yeah that's why you can't do it. you can't mm-hmm. you never do it yeah yeah that's what i'm saying uh, like i'm Oh, okay, 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 okay. It, it was a funny, I get it. Yeah. Okay. But it wasn't. I was, I, was, I was ready to defend it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what makes it funny. <laughs> no, I think five. I don't know if they're going to do that, but something needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. But I don't think live scoring. I don't like it because the, the moment when the guy gets his hand raised, that's the best television in sports. But and you ruin that. But, but this is the only sport where you don't know where yeah, you but that's, stand. That's part of the fun. But like, we've asked, we've asked fighters about the live scoring. They've said they wanted it. Mm-hmm. Fighters in other interviews have said they wanted it. Mm-hmm. Like the fighters want the live scoring. Yeah, but I, I, I think too, if you watch the fight, especially the five round fight, like imagine going into that last round and as the fan, cause we're sitting there going, oh, it's probably two, two in the back of your mind. You're like, ah, oh, you know, it could be three, one. Like, I don't really remember like the first round. It's been such a wild fight. Like, I, th- I think it's two, two. Like you check in Twitter, see what other people are saying. What if it was just like, it's two, two. Well, I go think out is, there and this get is it. the thing. This is the problem, right? This is the okay, case. Something was lost with the internet. Right. And now this is getting way into the weeds, but it's going to make sense in a minute. Right. Okay. Back okay. in the day, you would, you would be like, Oh, who was that actress in that one movie? Like, what? Who was that? And you, and you, you, you and all your buddies would just start arguing with each other. No, it was this actress. No, it was this actress. No, it was just this actress. Mm-hmm. And part of the fun is having the conversation and having the, the dialogue. Mm-hmm. And then nowadays, you're thinking, oh, who who's that one actor in that one movie? And, and one of you says, oh, well, let me Google it. And you figure out in five seconds and you're not having it's you don't get the fun of just debating over something meaningless with with your friends. And now with the UFC, UFC is a social like sport. You you yeah. get all the boys together to watch. Pay-per-views are expensive, right? So you mm-hmm. get all the boys together, whether it be in Zoom or in person, you get everyone together and you're talking about these fights, man. 
and one person scores that 10-9, the other person scores that 10-9 for the other guy, and another guy comes in out with the score 10-8, and you guys are all arguing about it dur- during the commercial break. It's a lot of fun. It's but part you, of the- you could you could still do that, and then just the score goes up before the round, and you're like, oh, I was right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Like you, yeah. you're not like you don't lose. I don't think you lose that. I get that you lose uh-huh. it by the end of the fight because there's a lot. There's so many times where. Like, me and you will watch a fight together at the end. I'm going, it's 29-28. That guy, you're saying it's 29-28 or 30-27 or whatever the other guy. And mm-hmm. we are arguing Becker about it. Yeah. But like, for me, it goes back to, like, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars for some of these fighters are on the line. Their careers. They deserve to know yeah. where they stand in the middle of the fight. And I don't – and people go – and I think the biggest drawback, too, is, like, you're just being, like, you're, you're that asshole that goes, well, I like the entertainment value. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what it's for, Brad. But also – That's what the, it's like, for. The fact, but the fact is, like – Why are we so, doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think the fighters deserve to know. And people say, well, what if a guy's up 2-0 and he'll just – He'll just hit the brakes and he'll just like jab yeah, it out. And, exactly. But that's not gonna happen because the other guy's gonna be down 0-2 and he knows it and he's gonna go out there trying to. And if you are just playing defense, just like like uh, just trying to play defense, not doing any offense, just riding it out, you're gonna get smoked, mm-hmm. or or you're gonna get 10-8 and it's gonna be tight. So they know that. And the and like in the UFC, these the highest level of fighting. These guys want to fight. Mm-hmm. They will go out there and fight no matter what. And if they don't. They're not gonna last. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a report in my ear from producer Mitch. We got breaking sports news that will now be a day old by the time that we get this podcast up. Cam Newton to the Patriots. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I just got a text. I got are a you, text somewhere. Are you serious? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just saw it on my laptop. I got a text. It, it came up on the screen. So, Holy uh, shit. He actually yeah, just signed on, on here. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Cam <laughs> Newton to the Patriots. Man, that's wild. I'm so glad I got my buddy texted that to me during the during the pod, man. That is nuts. Brad, your your take. Wow, what okay, the deal will be worth up to one uh, up to seven point five million. One, getting Cam Newton at seven point five million for one year is a steal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm go- I-, I was rolling with Stidham. Like I was right ready mm-hmm. to buy a Stidham jersey. To be quite honest with you, I think Stidham can be still the QB of the future, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's ready yet. But so Cam that Newton gives him another. You can get Cam Newton in as a bridge QB. Uh-huh. I mean, you Bill Belichick can do great things. Yeah, Cam but can and Bill this Belichick is this is all I'm saying. Cam Newton. Yes. <laughs> If the Bill, Panthers couldn't work with Cam Newton, it, is Cam Newton going to be able to make it in in a you, much stricter environment? Bill Belichick worked with Randy Moss. That's true. That's like, true. Randy like, Moss. like, think about how many people have came through the Patriots system that they mm-hmm. have just worked with that didn't work anywhere else. And mm-hmm. they have a proven track record. If you do not work, I don't give a shit how good you are, what we give up for you, your cut. So mm-hmm. I think Cam, and Cam Newton's got a lot to prove. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, we're winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> I wasn't sure you – I'm telling you right now, and we're winning we're, the Super Bowl. <laughs> number, number seven. Let's go. Number seven with, with Cam Newton. Yeah. Man, I don't know. Imagine yeah, Pat, Pat's Bucks in the Super Bowl. Let's go. Calling it right now. Pat Patriots Bucks, Bucks Super- Patriots win. Is that is that your best case scenario? Because you want Tom Brady to do well as well. Yeah, so it means Tom Brady does well, but then you get to flex on him that yeah, you're still not better, better than the team. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's gonna be. It's. I can't wait for this season of football, man. And there's so many great stories in there. And one thing, one thing, I'm I'm really glad about this too is, like Edelman. I, like I love Tom Brady, but Julian Edelman mm-hmm. is probably my favorite player on the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I, I love scrappy wide receivers because before that, Wes Walker was my favorite player. Mm. And for Julian Edelman, I mean, you go from having Brady and then, like, before with Gronk and everything to being – because he's really the only wide receiver on the team right now. Mm-hmm. And, like, dropping down to a rookie QB would be real t- – well, not rookie, but essentially rookie would be real tough. Mm-hmm. So, giving him a solid QB, that's that's good for Edelman. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hyped. Yeah. I'm hyped. That's, I'm, that's pretty good. I, I – yeah. I, I, I'm I'm calling it Super Bowl winner for the Pats. Super Bowl winner, winner for the Pats. Yeah. Man. 
I'm I'm high. I think. And like, and how how I mean, Cam Newton's a goddamn MVP. Like, yeah, he's yeah, no, he's Super a, Bowl. he's great. He's a great quarterback, proven in the playoffs. Um, competent guy, bit nuts, but uh, I I I like. The I, don't, I don't think he's that nuts. I don't think he's that nuts. Well, there's something that happened. There's something happened with the with him and the Panthers. Yeah, Carolina's that, that probably was... run like a shitty organization. <laughs> Yeah, let's hope. I mean, who that bad. like Carolina Panthers? Like, like, do you look at them and go a model NFL franchise? No, they're a pretty decent NFL franchise. I mean, they ruined Cam Newton. It tells that's you all fair. you need to know. That's fair. That's well. Let's see if he's they paid stay Christian ruined. McCaffrey like eighteen no. million a year as a running back. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? They paid Teddy Bridgewater what like twenty five million a year when they could have just re signed Cam Newton. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Cam Newton now is making half of that for the Patriots. 7.5. It's with, with incentives, too. Mm-hmm. So, cast it up to that. Oh, okay. Okay. So I mean, that makes sense. I mean, as long as he's healthy, healthy too. Because mm-hmm. like, who knows how healthy he is? Because I think that was a lot of the problem where I think – and I don't quote me on this because I, like, I wasn't really fully up to date, but I mm-hmm. think Carolina wanted to push him back and he wanted to stay out for his health. Or I could mm-hmm. be off a bit on that. Bro, that I'm, makes sense. I'm, that's, I'm hyped. That I'm hyped. To, as soon as we get Brock, if you're listening, I'm texting you right after this. See what you think of this. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be hyped too. No, it's crazy too that my buddy texted this to me because if we didn't, we would have just put out a sports podcast. Uh, and the then biggest like the biggest news. news in football, we just totally whiffed on. So uh, Because this literally, yeah, we this happened literally while we were recording. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm hyped. I, yeah, Pats are getting number seven. I'm telling you that. Pats number seven. You heard it here first, folks. But yeah. who's gonna actually win? The G-Men, the Giants. Let's go, baby. Yeah, yeah. Keep living in your fantasy land. <laughs> it, what, now, what's your best case scenario this year? Four and twelve. Come on, come on. We what? win at least eight games. Get out of here. Yeah, that's worse. <laughs> eight, eight and eight football purgatory. <laughs> yeah. What? It's it's this G, it's it's what we call the G spot. <laughs> it's that it's that sweet spot that the Giants always end up in. That's a tough one. That's, that's a, tough a tough one. one. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah, Anyways, that's, that's... moving on, we got so uh, UFC two fifty one coming up in a couple of weeks, and we're gonna have. Uh, um, we're gonna have more analysis next week because yeah, we'll go through it. Like I, th- I think uh, fight by fight breakdown, especially the main card and the title mm. fights next week. We'll do yeah. that. We're gonna be, uh, we're g- actually gonna be together. Mm-hmm. UFC two fifty one as well. Mm-hmm. We're gonna and, and it, it's gonna we're gonna keep it completely legal. We're gonna have masks on. You know, we're gonna be six feet apart. Brad's not getting in my house. He's just gonna have to stand outside. I'm gonna put the TV in the window. You know, it's all going to be kosher. So don't don't you think about calling the cops on us. This is completely <laughs> quarantine safety approved. I'm we're I will, we're going to be going golfing that Saturday too. And I think we got we got to have something on the line here. I think we I mean, do. I, I mean, I'm a horrible golfer. Yeah. But I know I'm going to look like Tiger Woods beside you. So yeah, we're going to have to give you some strokes. <laughs> So, yeah, because yeah. I know your skill. Producer Mitch is gonna be with us too. Mm-hmm. Great, who we're both gonna make like, him look cool. mm-hmm. like he's he's gonna have a tough day too. Yeah. So we're gonna have to like, how are we gonna bet this? I don't know. Like, are we gonna bet like normally? Like, I I give you some strokes type mm-hmm. thing. Like, we'll figure it. Will people we'll, in the comments we'll, let, let us know? Yeah, let how us know what how many strokes I should get. Yeah, we might as well give you like 50 strokes. That might be pushing. But we're going to have to figure out. I think we should uh, we'll, we'll let Instagram know. We should mm-hmm. uh, maybe like make a video on the course or at least get a picture with producer mm-hmm. Mitch. It's been a while. The last picture of all of us was what? the Seattle the, Dragons week one. That's wild. That's wild. And then was Dave, that, the, that, was, that was not the last one, was it? That we got with Mitch, yeah. Yeah, that was when, when was the last when was the last time we were, we hung out? Uh it was not the party episode, for Brock. Oh, ep- it was episode six, I think. Episode six, yeah. When we did yeah, it live. That's, and Mitch was there too. Mitch yeah. was there, yeah. We, we didn't get a picture with him though. Stuff. 
It's tough, man. It's been because yeah, I was I was we did the quarantine. David we had the David Pendel sweaters on. Yeah, because we just got them. Yeah, because I mean, and David Pendel liked the first uh, picture we had at the Dragons game. We're watching the Dragons game with Mitch, and that's yeah. where we got the ball rolling on and getting him as an as a friend of the program. Yeah, so I mean, it's been a it's been a it's while, been a while since we've right? had an interview. I yeah, think we got been... Yeah, we're definitely going to be. We haven't really looked for interviews since probably the NFL draft, which was mm. oh, that was feels like. So ages ago. ago that's so i think i think we're gonna start hunting for some more interviews soon things have been mm-hmm. kind of hectic on both of our sides as you can probably tell with the kind of the production that we've been rolling here mm-hmm. we've kind of died down a little bit but i think i think an interview we try and get one soon i'm mm-hmm. not promise anything but i think we should we get trying there yeah and then i mean once sports get rolling we're gonna be able to keep rolling because mm-hmm. right now we're like we're a big into the UFC and that's been rolling normal. Mm-hmm. But like once you add in like football comes back, baseball is going to be a big one. We haven't had a chance to talk really about a baseball games yet mm-hmm. on this podcast. Uh, I'm excited for it. Oh, it's going to be, we're going to blow up, dude. We're going to blow up. It's going to be huge. And I think too, we're going to talk to producer Mitch. And I think when we're together, I think we got to try and rip up one at, uh, together. Mm-hmm. For sure. And, do, do should, we, should we wear the mask? <laughs> yeah, we have to wear the masks, dude. People are gonna report yeah, no, us. No, no, it's legal though, because it's yeah, two no, households. It's, legal. it's yeah. legal. Yeah, people need to relax. People need to chill. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all kosher over here. Yeah. No. So. And that'd be that'd be a good one because we can recap two fifty one. Yeah. Oh, it'll be it'll be a great weekend. It'll be a great weekend for for everybody. And I think too, uh, like I think we should I should we should make some betting picks next weekend too for mm-hmm. it too. Uh, give a yeah. give a couple of plays. Maybe we uh, get a hold of Brock, bring him on for one of his underdog picks. Yeah, I that'd know, be sick. Because this guy, is. I know who I know who his underdog pick is. Yeah, so don't I know who it's gonna be, and it is really a wild one. I mean, it's gonna be wild, some... man. Brock's yeah, better because corner. it's a, it's a it's a it's a plus five hundred. I'll tell you, that. Brock's dogs, dude. <laughs> this guy, if we're gonna we're gonna be talking to him when he comes on, we're gonna be talking to him about. His, his performance the other night mm-hmm. and uh this guy you want you want to you want to ride with this guy he's got horseshoes up his ass i tell you i don't i don't know what it is he just he always picks underdogs that win i don't i don't get it mm-hmm. but, man so, what a guy we'll have him on and i don't know that's about all i got over here yeah we got some, i got some nascar bats in the we got to hang up and, and take a look. <laughs> yeah, we, need to, we need to get into the NASCAR bets because they're that's going on right now. Yeah. But, but anyways, uh, Instagram, big game talk, Twitter, big game talk, email, big game talk at gmail.com. Check phoenixfit.com or .ca wherever you live. Promo code BGT15 for 15% off any of your purchases, all your supplements, protein, CBD, athletic apparel, all your needs. They got it there. Any information you need, hit us up. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace, everybody.